happened to a colleague of mine that they were on the takeoff. They did a rejet takeoff at high speed, around 120, 130 knots. They started the rejet takeoff maneuver. When they stopped, okay, they analyzed the situation, and then all of a sudden, the cabin crew called the flight deck and said, we have smoke from the wings. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In today's video, we are going to talk about the passenger evacuation. We will see what happens when an aircraft has to evacuate the passengers, what actually a pilot, a captain, thinks before starting an evacuation, before taking the decision of an evacuation, what actually the cabin crew can do in case the captain doesn't call the evacuation, and what is the difference, which is the difference between an evacuation made on training and an evacuation in real life. You will see that especially the passengers will behave in a very different way. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So first of all, what is a passenger evacuation? Why we have this passenger evacuation? So a passenger evacuation is a fast way, is the fastest way to evacuate the aircraft. So it's the fastest way that the passenger can actually leave the aircraft. Why we do this is because sometimes we have, for example, an uncontrollable fire that doesn't give us much time to, have, to disembark the aircraft, okay? We cannot wait for the stairs and then everybody disembark very nice and easy. No, sometimes we really need to get out of the aircraft. Normally, never in a pilot career never happens. However, if it happens, it's good that we've got this procedure that allow us to leave the aircraft very, very quickly, very fast, okay? So what, what is this catastrophe? situations. We do the passenger evacuation when we have obvious reasons, for example, an uncontrollable fire. The uncontrollable fire means that we have a fire, we try to fight it, we try to extinguish the fire. However, all our agents, all our uh, procedures didn't allow us to extinguish the fire. In that case, that is an uncontrollable fire. And since it's an uncontrollable fire, we need to get to the, in the ground as soon as possible and evacuate the aircraft as soon as possible. Another catastrophic scenario that can actually uh, make us do this passenger evacuation is, for example, a big system failure. For example, you lower the gear on final before the landing and you will see that the landing gear actually doesn't go down or you have two wheels down, uh, you have the main landing gear down and the nose wheel stays up. This is a, again a situation where a passenger evacuation could happen because you want to get out of the plane as soon as possible, as soon as when you are on the ground. It is very important to understand the responsibility to call for a passenger evacuation stays with the captain. Okay, so the captain has to analyze the situation and then call for passenger evacuation if he or she thinks that is the most appropriate thing to do. However, we need also to understand that the passenger evacuation is an irreversible uh, procedure. So once you start the passenger evacuation, you cannot go back. Okay, and this is not a decision that the captain has to take lightly because passengers evacuation many, many times brings injuries, death and all of these sort of problems. So before starting passenger evacuation, the captain really needs to consider all of these aspects. According to regulation, an aircraft like the Boeing 737, the Airbus 320 and an airliner should be able to evacuate all its passengers within 90 seconds using half of the uh, emergency exits. Why half? Is because the regulations thinks and take into consideration that if you have a fire on one engine or fire on one side of the aircraft, you don't have to use, you will not use that side of the aircraft for obvious reasons because you don't want to open the door and jump straight into fire. So as a pilot, what do you do? There are two basically main scenarios here. You do an evacuation where, for obvious reasons, as we discussed, for example, you have an uncontrollable fire. So once, as soon as you're on the ground, you want to get out of the plane and evacuate the aircraft as soon as possible. However, there are more tricky situations where this decision is not obvious. For example, happened to a, um, a colleague of mine that they were on the takeoff. They did a rejet takeoff at high speed, around 120, 130 knots. They started the rejet takeoff maneuver. When they stopped, okay, they analyzed the situation, and then all of a sudden, the cabin crew called the flight deck and said, We have smoke from the wings. Okay, so in that case, it's a very uh, strange situation because you don't, see, you don't have a fire indication, you don't see the fire. The passengers, however, from the overwing, they can see the smoke, the smoke coming out. Okay, so what you do 
in that case, okay, you don't have information in the flight that you have fire. You 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 just did the rejectico for any other reason, not for the fire. However, there is some smokes going around. Okay, in that case, it is very important that the captain takes into consideration all the information that he can get. Okay, so it is very good the communication at this point with the ATC because the ATC they can see from the tower very closely to your aircraft. They can send firefighters truck to check your aircraft. Okay, in that occasion, for example, the smokes was coming out of the brakes because they, they were doing this rejected takeoff at high speed when they start breaking and heavy weight because they were taking off the brakes were very hot so the, the, the smokes was coming from the brakes do you do a passenger evacuation for that of course you don't because if the only smokes and the temp is because of the temperature of high brakes so you are firefighters there they confirm that the, the fire is not there and the situation is under control you don't just do the evacuation because you see some smokes okay because as we said before the evacuation can lead can lead to injuries death and so on okay so it's not it's not an easy call when it's not obvious okay it is an easy call even though it's never an easy call evacuation when it's obvious but when it's not obvious the captain should really think about all the possible scenarios okay from my personal experience with this type of failure with this type of situation when it's not obvious you always want to take extra time just to make sure you do the correct thing you take the correct decision okay because delay a little bit your decision while you are taking into consideration all the possible aspects will for sure uh, end up with a better outcome. So, but how does it really work? So let's say you, as a pilot, you are taking off and then you have to do a reject takeoff because of an engine fire. So the first thing you do, you reject takeoff and you make sure the aircraft is stopped, okay? In the, at this point, it's very important that ATC knows that you are stopping because of a fire, so they can send already firefighting while you are dealing with the situation. And you inform also the cabin to telling them to stand by and you tell them that an evacuation might be possible, okay? So at this point, you have ATC already aware sending the firefighting and the cabin crew already aware that are checking the situation from inside and outside the cabin. Now you take and you start dealing with the problem. So you check what is the engine with the problem and you start to fire to fight the fire in that specific engine. So let's say the engine is the number two. You want to shut down the fire, sh shut down the engine and shut down the fire. So if you s do these procedures following, of course, the approved procedure that depends on the aircraft, but normally you simply try to shut down the engine and shut down the fire. If the fire is extinguished, then from there you take it from there. So the situation downgrades a lot in the severity because you don't have fire anymore. Always, even though the indication of the fire is extinguished you always want to make sure that you talk to the firefighting and confirm that visually that the fire is not there anymore so if the fire is not there anymore would you do a passenger evacuation or not well it's a captain call however from my perspective it's not required because fire the fire is not there anymore okay so what you want to do you just want to perform a normal disembarkation but let's say the same scenario, you do all the procedures, but the fire is still there after you try to fight, after you extinguish and you basically uh, use the uh, fire agent that you have available for you for that specific engine and the fire is still there. In that case, the passage evacuation has to be performed because if it's uncontrollable fire confirmed by firefighters and so on, you really want to evacuate the aircraft, okay? So normally, guys, you stop you inform everybody so everybody can work while you're working also. You take the situation under control by ap applying the QRA age, the procedure on the ECAM, on the Airbus, whatever it is. And then you, from there, you really th think about do I need an evacuation or not? Applying, oh, of course, the company procedures. That depends on the aircraft, depends on the operator and so on. But generally speaking, this is what happens inside the flight deck before starting an evacuation. As we said, is a captain called the passenger evacuation on board of an aircraft. However, there are situations where the cabin crew can start the evacuations without the captain command. These are very limited situations. However, normally they are when you have really catastrophic situation. Let's say you do a ditching, okay? So in that case, the cabin crew can start a passenger evacuation. Maybe this change by, by operator. However, generally speaking, when you have a catastrophic situation, okay, the cabin crew can start. For example, a ditching, you know, you ditch, you don't wait for the captain to say, okay, we can evacuate. Of course, you're going to evacuate. You're not going to stay in the aircraft if the aircraft is underwater. For an uncontrollable fire, let's say you see in the, in the cabin a fire that is half of, the, half of the aircraft cabin, you really want to start an evacuation. For this, then smoke as well in the cabin, okay? 
or for an unusual structure, unusual attitude of the aircraft or a major uh, structural damage. So when it's obvious that it's better to evacuate the aircraft, the cabin crew can actually start the evacuation without waiting for the, the captain call. However, they should always wait for the engines to be off. Generally speaking, before starting evacuations, the pilot needs to make sure that there is no differential pressure between the cabin and outside, because if you have a differential pressure within the cabin and the atmospheric pressure, you will not be able to open the door, okay? You need to make sure that the engines are off and the fire, fight, the fire agents have been extinguished, okay? It's been uh, used in the engines in EPU. The communication between the captain and the cabin crew is paramount, okay? The cabin crew needs to know if a passenger evacuation could be possible or not. And actually, a good communication in these cases between pilots, cabin crew and ATC is really the difference between a good outcome and a really bad outcome, okay? Because normally, a bad outcome comes when everybody doesn't know what is going on around okay so it is very important that pilots cabin crew and ATC are actually on the same page okay so now you can see that there are scenarios where the passenger evacuation when you have time to prepare for passenger evacuation so let's say you take off and then you retract the gear and the gear doesn't retract or, or you have a, a gear malfunction in that case you can join a holding and prepare for a passenger evacuation okay after landing upon landing okay in that case you have time so the cabin crew can brief themselves can get ready can brief the passengers and so on. However, there are situations where there is no time. For example, bad weather, it happens already a few times, okay? Bad weather, the pilots on the landing, they do a mistake, they veer off of the runway, they get out of the runway. So what happens is that suddenly the aircraft is off of the runway, maybe as a landing gear uh, structural damage, the, the aircraft uh, basically collapses in one side. In that case, the cabin crew can, should start an evacuation and pilots also should go for a passenger evacuation. But in that case, you didn't expect that, okay? Because it was just a normal landing that unfortunately uh, end up being a uh, veer off, okay? So in that case, you really need to react quickly. And it's not very easy because even though pilots and cabin crew are trained to do the passenger evacuation, when there is the surprise, uh, the surprise effect is always a little bit of a shock at the beginning, but then it is very important that you follow the procedures because especially during passenger evacuation, you will see since it's an emergency, since you are in panicking, you go back to your instincts. And most of the time in aviation, the instincts are never right. It's always good to follow your procedures and follow what you've been trained for, okay? And we talk, we, talking about instincts, you will see that the passengers it, you know, when you see videos of training uh, about passenger evacuation, you see that the passengers are very nicely lining up one behind the other, going through the overwing exit or the emergency exit, whatever, very nice and easy. Yes, that is very beautiful to see. However, in real life, I can tell you that it's not like that. Because in real life, there is the panicking and the survival uh, aspect that goes into the passenger mind, okay? It's really our instinct. So what happens is that everybody jumps uh, on top of, of, of each other and everybody, and everybody try to get out of the windows or out of the emergency exit as quick as possible. So as a passenger also, I know it's not easy, I'm not judging when uh, I see some videos people judging uh, passengers, ah, you know, they did this, yeah, it's not easy because if you're not in that situation, you cannot judge. However, what we can do, we can say that if that happens, it's very important to stay calm, don't take your bags with you because the problem we take the bags is that once you get to the uh, exit or the door, you might obstruct the exit on the door, blocking the evacuation and every second is important when you have an uncontrollable fire. That's why we don't take the luggage with us. Okay, at the end, the luggage is not important. Our life is important. Okay, so but you will see that during training is very easy, very nice. Everybody line up, but in real life, there is a big mess. Everybody's trying to jump on the seat on top of each other and so on. So what they did actually once, they, in order to try to rep replicate this uh, uh, survival mode during a training or an evacuation with the uh, volunteers, they said whoever, like the first 10 people that get out of the plane is gonna get, uh, I don't know, let's say 500 euros, $500, okay? So you could see already people jumping each other to get this $500. But this is how it is in real life. We all know that procedures are nice, training is good, we are training, we do the training every year, every two years, whatever. However, in real life, we really need to make sure that we follow the procedure. Otherwise, all the training that we did is basically worthless. I want to close this video telling you what, you, what I think, okay? I think that 
unless it's very obvious, unless you have a, a, a controllable fire, a structural damage, unless you veer off of the runway, that's you need to react quick because you want to get out of the aircraft as soon as possible. In all the other cases, you can take a little bit more time to make sure that you call the right thing to do, the right procedures, okay? So you, sometimes you, we don't want to rush in panicking to a uh, decision, we just want to use common sense, we just want to use critical thinking, apply the procedures, and usually that should bring to a uh, positive outcome okay okay guys so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something and what i want to say you know i, I took uh, like three four months off because i started with a new airline and i see all your comments and i see all your support thank you very much guys so if you like the video please give it a like and consider subscribe i'll see you on the next one and i wish you a great day